Butterfly students, uh, we're going to walk you through the actual venipuncture procedure today. Uh, the first thing that we want to do is verify that we have a physician's order for this procedure. Uh, if he was going to want you to give them fluids, there would also be an order for what type and what rate of fluids that he would want. Um, so we need to verify the doctor's order. Um, if we're going to be hanging fluids, we got to make sure that the MAR and the order match, okay? But this particular client has an order for a uh, IV insertion with just a saline lock, so that's all we're going to do today. Um, I've also looked at her history um, of any mastectomies or if she's ever had a dialysis shunt placed or any kind of special catheter that would prevent me from being able to use uh, one extremity or another. Um, I'm also going to ask her about that as well. So I have verified all of those things outside the client's room. So then I would go to my supply room and get my appropriate supplies that I need. And these supplies include my IV start kit, which would be sealed, okay, my saline lock extension set, my IV cap one. I generally take a couple of different sizes in the client's room because you don't know what size IV you're going to be needing um, based on their veins. Also, you need to consider what is your purpose for this IV because if you're going to be giving blood products, they have to have at least a 20 gauge or larger uh, for blood products. So keep in mind what the purpose is. Uh, so I get my calf one. Generally, your tegaderm is going to be in your IV start kit, but I did get a tegaderm. Uh, I have some extra alcohol preps. I have my saline flushes. Uh, I have a towel that I'm going to take in with me. I have my gloves. Um, I also have my order or my MAR if that was applicable. Okay. So I have my supplies and I'm going to enter the front train. Okay. Hello, my name is Tara and I'm going to be your nurse today. The doctor has ordered for you to have an IV place today. Just for us to be able to give you medications and those kind of things if you need it. Have you ever had one before? She tells me she has. Okay. Well, you kind of know what to expect. Um, so the first thing I need to do is verify your identity. Um, can you state your name for me? And he says he's Mr. Joe Dunn. And can you tell me your date of birth? 5, 2, of 50 is what he says. And I'm going to compare this. And make sure those are accurate and compare his ID number. Uh, Mr. Dunn, do you have any allergies? He tells me he's allergic to codeine. Okay, well, we don't have any of that with us today. Do you have any allergies to latex or any kind of betadine or anything like that? And he says no. Mr. Dunn, um, I know that since you're a male, the mastectomy question doesn't apply to you. But if it was a female, you would need to ask that. Um, have you ever had a dialysis shunt placed in your arm or any kind of special IV catheter? And he says no. Okay. Mr. Dunn, are you right or left-handed? And he tells me that he is left-handed. So I'm going to try with his non-dominant hand. So I'm going to try with the right side first. Um, so I have verified my identity, asked, or his identity, uh, asked the appropriate questions. So now I'm going to perform my hand hygiene. Alright, Mr. Dunn, I got my hands washed. We're going to get started, okay? The first thing I'm going to do is raise your bed to where it's a little bit more comfortable height for me. All 
right, Mr. Dunn, I'm going to go ahead and place a towel under your arm. This just helps us um, not mess up the bed because many times you can't really help it. But you may uh, make a little bit of a mess when putting in an IV. I'm going to go ahead and let my side reel down. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do now is just kind of look and see what I have available. So I would ask him to hang his hand down in that dependent position and make a fist for me. Okay. And I see a, a good vein. Uh, you want a vein as, as straight as possible with uh, not valves. You want to make sure that it's soft and spongy and bouncy. If it was to be hardened, you'd want to avoid that kind of vein. Um, so I make sure of that. All right, Mr. Dunn, I'm just going to relax your hand right now. I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up my supplies. So I'll go ahead and open up my start kit, which will contain my tourniquet. It also contains my tape. So I'm going to go ahead and tear my tape. And you just need a few pieces. one and I'm going to split it in half. Okay. My start kit has my floor prep that I'll clean with. Okay. Go ahead and open my toga burn. Go ahead and open my IV catheter. I want to make sure that I keep this Cathlon sterile. I never want to touch the part that's actually going to go into the client. I'm just going to kind of loosen the cap a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to set it back in here. I've got my saline. I'm going to go ahead and get my extension kit and open that up. And since I've just opened this, I don't have to swab it with alcohol. I'm going to keep this cap sterile. If there was any kind of air in my syringe, I would need to get the air out. Go ahead and access this. And I'm just going to get that part off. And I'm just going to flush it with, I'm going to take the cap off. Just make sure you keep that cap sterile. I'm just going to flush it. Just to get it primed, I'm going to set this back in here. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and apply my tourniquet and just visualize at this point. And you always want to put your tourniquet above the site that you're wanting to stick. And you want to start as distally as possible. So you want to start with the hand. So again, I'm going to have them kind of hang their hand down and make a fist for me. And they do, and I just palpate that vein. And that's a good vein right there. It's soft and spongy. Release my tourniquet because I don't want it on for long periods of time. Just make sure I have all my supplies ready. I'm going to go ahead and sit my saline lock here so that it's easily accessible. Um, get my tape and all that close to me. All right. All right, Mr. Dunn, I'm going to reapply this tourniquet. I'm going to put my gloves on. I'm going to activate my floor prep. You just squeeze it and it's going to pop. Okay. And floor prep, we just go back and forth or side to side, back and forth. We don't go in a circular motion. Okay, and that's going to dry. All right. I'm going to get my IV cap on. It needs to be bevel up. The bevel needs to be up. All right. I'm going to hold just a little bit of pressure on my vein. I'm going to go in at an angle. Once I get in the vein, 
I'm going to get more flush with the skin so that I don't go through the vein. And I have a flash. Once I see the flash, I'm going to advance my calf line off. I'm going to release my tourniquet. I'm going to hold pressure, activate my safety, get my lock. And I'm going to keep hold of my calf line. And I'm going to flush. And, make, and it should flush easy. If it doesn't flush easy or if it infiltrates, we don't want to continue flushing. We would want to discontinue this IV and start a new one. Okay, I'm going to clamp it off. And I don't let go of my calf line. Usually your start kit will have a little piece of gauze that you could use to clean this side up if it was wet like this one is. Just keep a hold of your calf line. You don't want to let go. Clean this up. Okay, now I'm going to take my tape and I'm going to go up under my calf line. And I'm going to just crisscross it over. Okay, now that I have a little bit of tape on it that will support it, I will take my tegaderm and I will start this tegaderm off and place it over my site. And I will peel the white part off. In just a minute, I will take that piece of paper and label, but right now I'm going to finish taping. You want to make sure it's very good and supported. I'm going to tape my extension so that it's not moving a lot. And if you see where that blood has backed up into your catheter, let's go ahead and flush that again just to make sure we don't lose our IV site and clear that cath line. And we'll clamp it back off. Okay. At this point, we have our IV secure. We'll take our saline off. Both of these need to go in our SARPS container. I will go ahead and label this with the date, time, and my initials and the gauge, which mine was a 22 gauge. Don't put it over your site because you need to be able to visualize your site, but put it to the side. Okay. All right. So let's just say it's been a few minutes and we need to flush this port again. If I need to access this port now, I need to make sure that I get an alcohol prep. We'll get our saline. You can see this saline has air in it, so I'm going to pull back and push the air out, okay? I'm gonna clean my port really well with alcohol to remove any kind of contaminant. I'm gonna access my port. I'm gonna unclamp, and I would flush with generally about three milliliters of saline, just enough to keep that line clear, okay? All right. So now we are done with the insertion procedure. All right, Mr. Dunn, we're finished. So now I'm going to clean up my supplies. Like I said, these items need to go in your sharps. I would throw the rest of my items away. Um, all right, Mr. Dunn, do you need anything before I go? And we'll be frequently checking on your IV site just to make sure that it is good. If you were to have problems, just call us, okay? I'm going to let your bed back down. Okay. 
Thank you, Mr. Dunn. We'll be back to check on you. I've cleaned all my supplies up. I'm going to take my gloves off. Perform hand hygiene. Once I exit the room, I will go to the chart and I will document which arm I put the IV in, what site. So it was in the, uh, the right hand. It was a number 22 gauge. It only took us one attempt and it flushed well without any kind of infiltration. Um, the client tolerated it well. Um, so just make sure you document the procedure.